John Popovich uh, here again in front of the uh, living wall, uh, bringing uh, another one of our uh, legends uh, interview. Uh, today we're going to be uh, talking uh, about uh, the Department of Otolaryngology. So I'm very uh, pleased to have uh, Dr. Tamar Ganim uh, here. Thank you, uh, Tamar, I uh, wonder if you could uh, describe um, what work you do within uh, head and neck. Sure, so I'm, the, um, I'm a head and neck surgeon. I also do reconstructive surgery, so I take care of head and neck cancer patients, uh, both uh, primarily diagnosed or those who've had uh, treatment with radiation or radiation and chemo and who've not had a response and needed surgery as their definitive uh, uh, cure. Uh, I also work uh, as a reconstructive surgeon, so a lot of times after radiation and chemotherapy or some of the cancers uh, where we're removing tissue, uh, we need to replace that tissue with a new piece of bone, a new piece of uh, uh, skin that will uh, cover outside skin or reconstruct a tongue or a jaw bone. So those are some of the things that we do as reconstructive surgeons. What are the types of techniques and training uh, and uh, approaches that you take now that uh, have, has made this field really become uh, so uh, incredibly and explosive in uh, caring for patients with head and neck cancers. From a surgical standpoint, the biggest um, advancement is our ability to do microvascular reconstruction, which is being able to rebuild any part um, in the head and neck with tissue from somewhere else from the body. And we take that tissue, whether it's bone, skin, the combination with its blood supply and we can transplant that tissue from one part of the body to the patient's head and neck area to reconstruct the defect that we're looking at. So you've also been using robotic technology, uh, which I think many people think of it as something which is used primarily in the abdomen or perhaps in prostate uh, surgery. How do you use robotic technology in the uh, head and neck cancers? So we've been using it, it's been FDA approved, approved since December of 2009 uh, for early uh, throat cancers, uh, supraglottic cancers, and uh, so we utilize the same type of robot, the same type of instruments uh, to get through in the mouth and remove some of these tumors. And actually, interestingly, we've actually been also using it for some of our reconstruction work. So now we can take some tissues for more advanced cancers, we can take tissue from elsewhere, and we can use a robot to sew that tissue inside the throat um, in areas that we typically can't access uh, putting sutures by hand. I see, and so where, where do you see the field going? What, what's going to be new in, uh, uh, in the approach to uh, the uh, diagnosis and treatment of patients with head and neck cancers? Um, so it's a very exciting time actually now because of uh, new precision medicine uh, type technology um, that actually here at Henry Ford we're in the forefront of this, uh, but we can actually test patients um, uh, tumor tissue for certain genetic abnormalities and based on that determine some therapies that may are not standard therapies but may be very effective. Uh, there are things now such as immunotherapy, for example, where we use the body's immune system to fight cancers um, and that has given patients options when options were very limited after traditional therapies have failed. Well, this is uh, just remarkable work and I want to thank you and your colleagues and uh, you can see why uh, our uh, head and neck uh, department is in the top 50 in U.S. News and World thank Report you. because it truly is uh, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the great uh, uh, great departments, great activities that are being done, and I have to say, uh, in, in a big extent because of uh, much of the work that you've done as well. So I want to thank you, Tamara. Thank you very much. You're welcome.